Greetings, Cyberdogs and citizens of the internet. This is Rendog coming at you from Nuclear Reactor Chamber 1 in this Let's Play Minecraft Feed the Beast series. In the previous episode, we were installing a utility station as well as completing the internal corridors of the power module of the Renstar. And in this episode, my friends, we have to attend to Nuclear Reactor Alpha because as you can see from the display at the back there, its temperature is currently 7060 and we are on the brink of nuclear freaking disaster. I hope you cyber dogs have your rad suits on as well as a crunchy ass freaking snack and tasty ass beverage. Let's feed the beast that is our mind. Oh my freaking word, Cyberdogs, at the end of the previous episode, I didn't actually notice that Nuclear Reactor Alpha had turned itself off, and a ton of you Cyberdogs were saying in the comment section of the previous video, Ren diggity dog, the Ren star is about to explode, and that is basically what is going down over here, guys. We can see that the thermometer over there has reached 7,000, it has automatically turned off the nuclear reactor, and that means that we had basically broken the nuclear reactor in the previous episode, and yeah... Um, having looked back at the footage, what happened at, at some point in the beginning of the video, I tried to take out the depleted uranium cells and instead of taking out the depleted uranium cells, I took out one of the heat vents and then I didn't put it back properly and basically what has happened is there has been an internal meltdown within nuclear reactor alpha and it is not pretty man. Let's just get ourselves in here. You can see when you get too close to this reactor, it actually damages you. There is so much heat coming out of this reactor right now. It is pretty ridiculous. Um, so there we go, man. I've just unplugged one of the chambers. Let me just plug it back in again, actually. Um, but we can see that this reactor is actually pumping over here, man. Let's get the quad uranium cells out of here and the near depleted uranium cell. Let's get ourselves out of here before we melt to death, man. Whew. My goodness gracious. Well, the temperature is not going down. So I think what we're probably going to have to do is install all of the components or reinstall all of the components back into the nuclear reactor you guys could actually see there that all of the heat vents had actually melted and uh, that is not a good thing i've actually rebuilt all of them however the problem is rebuilding these heat vents has literally resulted in us using every last bit of copper that i have uh, in this this feed the beast world i had to turn all of the the copper covers that I had in the chest over there back into copper blocks and then freaking pulverize those copper blocks back down into freaking ingots and then use those ingots to create all of these freaking heat vents right now so essentially guys we are we are running dry on freaking copper and I don't know what we're going to do about this man but we need to fix this nuclear reactor before we have a huge ass problem up in here so i think what i'm going to do is let's just drop off these near depleted uranium cells i think i'm going to have to reinsert the heat vents um, into the nuclear reactor and reinsert all of the the component heat vents as well as a, a component heat exchanger that we also lost in this process i'll tell you what guys let's get rid of all of this jazz in my inventory right now and let's pick up all of the heat vents and all of the stuff that we need let's see if we can reconfigure um, the nuclear reactor and get this bad boy up and running let's just drop everything off man we need to work really really fast we need to get this reactor back to a reasonable temperature right now and uh, i think what i probably have to do oh my goodness gracious man this is going to be so difficult to do um without dying as soon as we come anywhere close to this we actually start melting which is pretty crazy i think what i want to do is take down the door of this reactor chamber let's take down this reinforced door and that way we can come in and out quite quickly. All right, so let's open up the reactor. We know that we need to get our 60K coolant cells in the corners. Let's get our component heat vents uh, in place. I think, I think they've got to be over here like... Oh, no, no, no. They've got to be like this, right? There we go. Let's just back up, back up, back up. Oh my goodness, guys. This is absolutely insane. I am so grateful for the fact that I installed this thermostat thing over here, man. If that had not happened, then there would have been serious issues going on in this reactor, man. Right, let's get the heat vents in here, guys. We need to start dissipating this heat ASAP. Um, you can already see that. Oh, man. All of the compon components are starting to take damage again. We need to get the heat vents in here as quickly as possible so that we don't lose any more of them. If we lose any more of them, we are actually screwed because we do not have the materials required to rebuild this jazz, man. Let's get all of the heat vents in place. Come on, baby. There we go. Stabilized. Oh. All right, we should see the heat going down. Yeah, the heat is going down below 7,000. 
let's uh, check the monitor over here. Oh my goodness, the temperature's back down to zero. Oh man, that was some intense ass jazz right there. Whew. All right, well we can get, now we can get nuclear reactor uh, A fired up again. Let's have a look. The quad uranium cells are installed correctly. Uh, all of the components are installed correctly. Let's get our reinforced door installed once again. Wow, guys, that was actually way too close for comfort, man. Um, I mean, I, I started Feed the Beast today, and what I was going to be doing in today's episode uh, was, in fact, working on the maintenance level of the, the Renstar. But then I noticed as I, as I went into the power control room, I had a look at the, at the, the big broad, broadcasting thing over there, and nuclear reactor chamber A was not freaking running. And I was like, oh my goodness, man, there is an explosion about to freaking happen right now. But everything is back to normal, my cyber diggity dogs. Oh man, happy freaking days. Now, what I think we should probably do in this episode is install a, a warning mechanism um, that is going to help us not uh, basically blow up the rain star in this kind of situation again. I want to have an early warning system that lets me know that if I have, I have installed the components into our reactors incorrectly, uh, that the, that the rain star will actually let me know. And we're going to be doing that by creating something called an industrial alarm. And to make an industrial alarm, we need reinforced glass, a howler alarm, and some orange dye and redstone. And to make a howler alarm, we need these note blocks from Minecraft survival and, uh, some electronic circuits and whatnot. And to make a, a note, block you just need redstone with some weed uh, so i've sort of prepared some of these materials guys and what this alarm is essentially uh, going to do is it, it is going to go off when the thermostat uh, meter reaches its maximum so in exactly the same way as um the moment that the thermostat uh, reaches 7,000 degrees it turns the nuclear reactor off we are also going to get that thing to set an alarm off at the same time so as soon as that temperature hits uh, that critical um, level, we are literally going to hear uh, an alarm going off. Now, uh, I haven't actually made these industrial alarms before, but from what I've read, um, I think it's pretty simple. I think we need iron like this and electronic circuits um, here and redstone here, I think. There we go. We need to make two hardware alarms like that, and then we can make our industrial alarms like so. There we go. Let's make two industrial alarms like this. And uh, I've made them orange also. I used orange dye to make them, obviously, because we're in the power plant room. And the power plant room is freaking orange. <laughs> um, so let's check it out, right? We already have a circuit over here. Um, this circuit up in here uh, comes from the, thermos, the, the thermostat. What is this thing actually called? Um, I think I'm calling it wrong. It's called a, th a thermal monitor. Yeah, it's a thermal monitor. So we already have a redstone wire coming from the thermal monitor to turn off the redstone torch over here. So why don't we try and install... Hmm. Can we put out... Can we just install an alarm like inside here? Or like on top over here? No, I don't think we're going to be able to install the alarm inside uh, here. I think we might actually have to head underground um or underneath the rain star for that matter so let's just dig a little access hole over here and i think what we can literally do is just connect the alarm um pretty much like over here there we go okay so the alarm is connected so that's nuclear reactor chamber a connected let's head head on over to nuclear reactor chamber b uh and we'll connect the alarm like that what the jazz that did not actually connect itself Try that again. What about over here? What in the what in the jazz? All right, there we go. All right, it was just something going on with, weirdly with the with the redstone alloy wire over there. All right, well let's get let's get it into a, a better spot over here. I think I kind of want it in exactly the same spot that I have over there, but um, I don't think we're going to be able to do it that way. Nope. Face palm. Jetpack face palm. All right, there we go. All right, so the alarms are now installed. Now let's test this bad boy out, right? So let's head over to the thermal monitor of reactor chamber A and let's set the temperature to zero. Whoa, <laughs> that industrial alarm is awesome. Wow, it's really freaking loud also. 
All right, there we go, guys. So now we have an early warning alarm system in place, uh, as well as an automatic off switch to a kill switch that, that will engage. Hey, kill switch engaged. <laughs> but that kill switch will engage when the nuclear reactor reaches 7,000, and that'll set off that industrial alarm, which I'm pretty sure we'll be able to hear from about 20 miles away. Man, that is some loud-ass jazz over there. Oh my goodness, my heart can rest at, at ease now, guys. That is, man, that was some close-ass jazz. And thank Bajingo for thermal monitors, guys. If you guys are, are trying to make nuclear reactors in your Feed the Beast worlds, please, please, for the love of all that is holy, make sure that you install thermal monitors. Because if you don't, look how easily in the previous episode I messed up the components in the, in the, in the nuclear reactor. Just because I worked too fast. You know, I came in here and I was shift clicking. I was like shift clicking like this. And then, and then what the, what in the, whoa, did I just, did I just glitch in another quad uranium cell? Did you see that? That was weird. Wow, that was very, very weird right there. Well, <laughs> we just picked ourselves up a free quad uranium cell. Sweet. Oh, wait, hang on. Why, why do we have a component heat vent in our inventory? What is going on over here? Oh, you see, I almost did it again. Okay, it glitched out over there. Uh, okay, wow. I think I'm just going to leave the reactor, uh, reactor chamber A right now. Uh, or reactor room one. I'm, I'm leaving. I'm not messing with those reactors anymore, guys. Because as you can see, crazy things happen. Things glitch out. Maybe that's what happened last time. I took out one of the nuclear, or one of the quad uranium cells, and maybe it switched itself. It like glitched out and switched itself for a heat vent. Maybe that's what happened there, man. But anyway, let's head back into the power control room over here, guys. Nuclear reactor beta is, is running nicely. Nuclear reactor alpha is running nicely. And uh, the Cyber Labs MFE array is now recharging once again. All right, sweet. So, whew, order has been restored. And uh, nuclear Armaged Armageddon has been averted for now. Um, man, that was intense. Um, right, anyway guys, one of the other things that I've been working on or thinking about is what uh, this little structure over here, and you guys can probably work out exactly what this is already. What I realized while I was running around up here is that there is actually no uh, proper place to, to throw a portal down. Like you can throw portals down on the floor, but you can't throw them uh, down on the, the walls because they're all made out of like cover strips and half slabs and whatnot. And uh, what I thought I could do is make like basically portal pads throughout the Ren Star Space Platform. So like throughout the corridors, we could build these little portal pads like this. And I think that's kind of cool, right? So wherever you are in the Ren Star, if you need to like zip somewhere via a portal gun, you can just, um, cut, you know, we'll have two of these portal pads per corridor. Uh, and that'll just be like a really easy way to zip uh, into a portal and, and get, get transported into, you know, wherever you, you want to go on the other side of your portal gun. So I think, I actually think that's a pretty sweet idea, man. So I think I'm just going to install one more over here. They, they were actually, it was pretty easy to put together. We just need some marble, uh, some of these copper block covers. And we're literally just like building a nice little portal platform, I guess. And it's just going to make our lives easier, man. The Ren Star is all about convenience. It's all about being able to, to get to and get away from the places that we need to go to in the space platform as quickly as humanly possible, you know. We want the, the platform to be as efficient as possible and as human friendly as possible uh, so we want it to be like a, a really advanced space platform that covers all aspects of space life like the utility station over here for example right this is like a, a design in place that helps our lives as a, a ren star space capsuleer and uh, these little pads that will dot all around the corridors uh, are going to do exactly the same thing i mean maybe we even throw one in here although i don't think we can because it's not even no, we could make like a miniature one over here, but nah. I think maybe we'll find like another use for this space over here. So this is the utility station space. These spaces are for the, the teleportation uh, wall pads, I guess. And then we've got another open space for over here. Guys, if you have any ideas, let me know in the comment section below. What could we use this space for? That could be pretty awesome, man. But there we go. I actually think that looks pretty awesome. And it, it kind of breaks up the monotony of the corridor also, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I think that's pretty rad. 
Anyway, let me know what you guys think about the uh, the teleportation walls of the corridors over here. Uh, there is one more thing that I wanted to do in today's episode, guys. A very important thing, in fact. And uh, that is, of course, installing another quarry. Um, one of our quarries in the previous episode had actually run dry. So we need to reinstall that bad boy. Let's head over to the Metalworks factory over here for a brief second and have a look at our, our metal intake. We basically got a couple stacks of copper. All right, that's, that's pretty decent. We're slowly but surely sucking copper in. Uh, but that's definitely nowhere near enough copper required uh, for our needs especially because we've only got an hour left on on um, reactor beta on nuclear reactor beta which means we need another couple stacks of copper ingots to create another couple of quad uranium cells so we definitely need to get some more copper up in our business ASAP, my friends. And the best way to do that is to plug in another freaking quarry. Eat it, spider bottle! There we go, man. Uh, man, I've just been chainsawing things to death. I don't know how much damage a chainsaw does, but I think it's I think it's quite substantial. I think a chainsaw actually does quite a, a good amount of damage. No, 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 no. There is a zombie. I hear zombies bashing on doors. Why I didn't sleep, I do not know. Rentown is under siege, people. Under freaking siege. And as we only have two villagers left... This is not a good thing. There he is! Die, bastard! Oh, my goodness. Yeah, we definitely have to preserve our last remaining villages. It's up to them to repopulate Rentown, man. Uh, considering I, I chainsawed one to death in yesterday's episode. But there we go. All right. Uh, I'm telling you, man. After yesterday's episode, I am so on edge in Feed the Beast right now. I hadn't played Feed the Beast for so freaking long that I, I just, I'm just noobing out so badly from messing up my nuclear reactor to having creepers blow up my freaking cyber laboratory uh, to having zombies killing our, our villagers or more accurately me chainsawing our, chainsawing our villagers to death. Um, yeah, man, I got to get back on the Feed the Beast freaking trailer. <laughs> I got to relearn how to play this game. Eat chainsaw, butthole! Bam! All right, there we go. So I've already set up like a, a little a redstone energy conduit power line over here. Um, and I've made a space for two more quarries. So we've got another quarry potential potentially over here and another quarry potentially over here. And I do believe that I even set up another quarry over here, another potential spot. Yeah, there's another potential spot over here too. So um, looking pretty freaking sweet. Um, I need your bones. But we do need to get the la the landmarks fired up correctly. So let's head over to this spot. I think I want to fire up this quarry over here. Um, is it connected? Are we missing a landmark down there? Oh, I see. I see. We need to disconnect both of these uh, these landmarks over here. So for those of you guys who haven't seen me install quarries yet, maybe you've uh, joined the, the, the series late on in the game um, <laughs> and you haven't watched the previous episodes. And by the way, I'm freaking angry with the ass. And if you don't go watch the previous episodes, this chainsaw is going directly up your butthole. And then I'm going to turn it on. And then things are going to get freaking messy. You know what I'm saying? Go watch the previous episodes, freaking buttholes. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> but your landmarks need to align perfectly, right? Uh, and then you can right click and there we go all right so the landmarks are now in place i picked up this quarry from this empty quarry spot over here if you guys remember we had a quarry in this location over here um and i just picked it up and we're going to move it w basically a whole quarry in that direction and of course we're going to need to connect this new quarry to the item delivery um system over here all right cyber dogs welcome back i have just finished installing the golden transport pipe that is going to be sucking all of the delicious freaking loots out of our brand new quarry to be delivered directly into the butthole of our sorting system and all that's left now to do guys is to install our brand new freaking quarry so let's get it placed right over here there we go the quarry has taken the landmarks quite nicely and it is going to start removing this giant ass layer of material before it actually starts quarrying 
terrifying. Uh, and that actually reminds me, this might be a very good opportunity to get our hands on a whole bunch of freaking copper. Um, usually what I do when I set up these new quarries is I manually help the quarry to remove this top layer of dirt. And generally what happens is that actually gives us quite a lot of material. Uh, and generally it gives us quite a lot of iron and quite a lot of copper also because those are the materials that occur a, a lot at the top part of, um, of Minecraft or at, at this height anyway. We also get like a whole bunch of appetite and a whole bunch of other stuff too. Uh, so I think what I should probably do is spend the next hour or so just helping this quarry get rid of all of this jazz. It's probably starting... Um, Let's have a look. Yes, you can see the laser beam is already there we go. You can see that it's already started its business over here, man. It's already started vaporizing the block. So the faster it actually vaporizes, and damn, it is vaporizing quick, uh, the more of that copper we're actually going to lose. So I think I should probably end the video here, guys, and actually spend a little bit of time digging out this area and collecting as much copper as we can get. Uh, one of you cyber dogs actually suggested looking through the walls of the quarry for some copper. Obviously, there's going to be a ton of copper around here because we are currently on, what, level, uh, let's have a look, level 49. So we're pretty high up, right? And already, here, check it out. Here's a nice little cache of copper. And if we can collect all of this raw copper ore that we can just see in the walls of the quarries, we can then macerate it and basically double the yield of copper that we find. And uh, considering that our current goal is to be able to make another set of quad uranium cells for our reactors, I think that a, a good idea for me is to actually try and collect as much freaking copper as I possibly can. Um, so I'll tell you what guys, I'm going to end the video here. Uh, basically achieved everything that I wanted to do today. Uh, that was fixing reactor chamber A. Uh, preventing a nuclear freaking apocalypse in Rentown, um, <laughs> installing an early warning alarm system into our nuclear reactors and setting up another quarry so that we can start getting a, a whole bunch of copper. So I think I'm going to end the episode here, guys, and I'm going to get to doing just some good old fashioned block grinding. I'm going to try and collect as much of this as I can, and I won't macerate it until the next video, guys, so you, got, you can see how much I actually collect out of these quarries. I mean, so far we haven't managed to get that much. I see a whole bunch of iron and stuff, but um, I guess there isn't actually that much copper around here. But anyway, guys, I really hope you have enjoyed this episode of Let's Play Minecraft Feed the Beast. It was a pretty precarious one, and hopefully I've, uh, I've managed to lower the amount of face palms required across the world for this Feed the Beast uh, series. And guys, I do want to apologize for all of the face palmage that's been going on for the past two, two uh, episodes or so. But you know how it is, man. This is a freaking Rendog video. What do you expect? Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this episode. This has been Ren Diggity Dog feeding the beast that is my mind. And I will see you in the next episode. Goodbye, my friends!